When we're talking about optimization, it's important to recognize that there's two kinds of optima that we can find in a function, global and local. The tests that we've covered earlier in the course about first and second derivative tests only give us local information in most cases, unless we take it a step further. And the idea is we know that a point is a minimum relative to the points nearby, but that doesn't tell us whether there might be another minimum somewhere else that's even lower. The first and second derivative tests just say, around this point that you found, it is the lowest point amongst its neighbors. So that's an important condition or limitation of the local analysis. Of course, in many real application scenarios, we want to identify the global max if we can. And that's going to be the point that is literally the highest or possibly equal to some other high points over all the points in the domain. And the most classic example of that would be a function that goes up, has a single maximum, and maybe even has some other maxima that are lower than that, but this would be a global maximum here. It is possible to have several copies of a global maxima, and you can think of that through the example of sine of x. Sine of x goes up and hits one, and then it goes up and it hits one again, and then it goes up and hits one again. All of these are points that are the highest or possibly equal to all the other points on the graph. So we'd have a repeated global maximum for that kind of example. The same kind of definitions apply if we're looking at minima as well. We just flip the direction of these inequalities. Let's see if we can compare and contrast those a bit. Try to think of an example of a simple function with multiple global maxima. Give you a moment. All right, hopefully that sine x example came back to you. Cos of x would be an alternative. If you're in that family, you might think tan of x is possible, but actually tan of x would not work because tan has the repeating structure, but it has no single highest point. Because of the asymptotes in the tan of x graph, sketch these out here, because of the asymptote going off towards infinity, you can't identify a single point on the graph, going back here, you can't identify a single point on the graph which is higher than its neighbors, than all its neighbors in the entire domain. So tan x has no global max whatsoever. Sine and cosine though, both would have that global max repeated. You could also construct some kind of polynomial that might have, for example, one of those W shapes. Uh, we're looking for maxima, so it might have a double bend here. And just by coincidence, those two maxima might be at exactly the same height. That doesn't happen as often, but it's certainly something that we could construct if we wanted to. <clears throat> now, in the next example, Try to think of a simple function with a single global maximum, but no global minimum. I'll give you a moment. Sometimes it helps to sketch it first. We want a function with a single global maximum, so a highest point, and no global minimum. Well, that means something that would head down and down and down forever. And if we wanted to keep it really simple, we could have that centered right at the origin here and something like y equals negative x squared. Just a flipped version of the regular parabola would satisfy this goal, this construction. How about a simple function with neither a global maximum nor a global minimum? Take a moment to think about it, pause if you like. All right, again, we've seen one of these before. Tan of x, in fact, would be one of those functions. There are many more though too. One that comes to mind, keeping it fairly simple, but in the polynomial side, we have the same kind of shape with y equals x cubed, just without the repeated structure that the tangent function has. So the tangent function has no single highest point repeated or otherwise. Y equals x cubed has no single highest point either, nor does it have a single lowest point. These functions have neither a global max nor a min 
if we're allowed to consider their entire domains. Earlier in the notes, we worked with this function here, and we found that this had critical points at x equals 1, and that gave a y equals 8 value when we plugged it in, and a second critical point at x equals 2, which corresponded to y equals 7. Now if we did a quick sketch of the entire graph of that function, which we did earlier, we could tell you that the graph goes up, and then down, then back up again. And so on its own, on the whole domain, there is no global max and no global min. It has local peaks, absolutely. This is a local maximum, this is a local minimum, but there's no global extrema because the function can go higher than any point you pick and the function can also go lower than any point you pick just by moving out further. So how can we make this interesting from a global maxima perspective? If we limit the domain, all of a sudden things get more interesting. We know our critical points occur at x equals 1 and x equals 2. If we enforce an artificial boundary on that function and limit ourselves to the study of x equals 0 up to x equals 2.5, then we know a few things like the height of the two critical points, bring that down, and we can detect whether, well, we can detect what the height is on this next part. And if we knew what happened at x equals zero, well, f of zero, we can calculate, it'll be zero, 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 zero plus three. In fact, we can improve this sketch dramatically and know that this curve bends down and reaches three. We can also tell what the value at 2.5 is at the other extreme of the interval we've selected. And if we plug that into our calculations here, we actually end up with exactly the value 8 again. So, in this scenario, what can we say about this function limited to this domain? That's an important piece of information to include in any statement, but on the domain 0 to 2.5, x equals, looking for the global minimum, x equals 0 is the global minimum. And we actually have a tie, x equals 1 and x equals 2.5, tie for the global max. Now we can get more specific here. This is at y equals three, and the global maxes both occur at y equals eight. Again, the critical point of this is to separate these two cases. If we have the whole domain to play with, this function can go up as high as it wants. It can also go as low as it wants. But if we limit ourselves to a region and sketch only that region, and this can happen, say example in economics, if only some values of economic productivity are valid or reasonable or achievable, then we might constrain our graph and there we might be able to identify global mins and maxes on that constrained interval. So this involves reading the questions very carefully to make sure you can understand completely what constraints, if any, are being applied.